Thanks for staying with us. The Portacot refinery in River State has officially resumed crude oil processing, marking a significant milestone in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. After years of inactivity and extensive rehabilitation, the refinery now processes allegedly 60,000 barrels of crude oil daily, contributing to efforts to boost local refining capacity and reduce reliance on expensive fuel imports. This development is expected to stabilize the supply of refined products like petrol and kerosene, potentially lowering prices for consumers while saving foreign exchange for the country. The project has created thousands of jobs during the, its rehabilitation phase, with more opportunities anticipated as operations continue, providing an economic boost to River State and its surrounding areas. However, challenges remain, including ensuring a steady crude oil supply, addressing pipeline vandalism, and maintaining operational efficiency through transparent and effective management. Uh, as part of broader efforts to revive the nation's refineries alongside the operational Dangote Refinery and the planned rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries, the Port Harcourt refineries restart symbolizes a renewed drive for energy independence and economic growth in Nigeria, or at least supposedly uh, symbolizes that. Our guest this morning to look at the issues surrounding this is Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst, and also Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst and energy expert. Uh, gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Yambo. Good morning. Okay, let me start with wisdom. Uh, wisdom. Um, how do you feel? Let me just start with that. How do you feel? Portacot mm -hmm. Refinery finally is on stream. Well, well this is good. This is good news. Uh, uh, being someone that is from River State first, um, uh, this is good. Also, knowing that for how many years tried to, to get the refineries up. Um, it's been an anomaly that as a country with the, you know, um, level of crude oil we have um, exporting every now and then, we are able to refine our own um, crude oil. It's an abnormally. And um, we have always, you know, raised it as a concern for many years. So this has come as a good news. I want to congratulate uh, Mr. President and the NAPCL leadership for finally doing this after a series of promises to get this up and running. Um, we commend their efforts so far, even though this is just for 60% uh, production capacity. Um, we, we are happy that finally, after 25 years uh, since the Front Republic, we have a refinery that is up and running. Uh, it's not what we should really be celebrating now, but unfortunately we have to considering the fact that um, energy security is a big problem for us as a nation at this moment, uh, considering the cost of PMS at the moment, um, and cost, co considering the cost of power at the moment, and considering the economy in, in itself at the moment. So this is good. Um, we hope that this will drive the competition that the, that the sector needs, um, of course, to be able to drive down uh, the cost of PMS most especially, uh, but we're happy. This is good news for the sector. And uh, we hope that um, now that we are up and running, we're able to keep production um, uh, uh, continuous, 60%. Uh, what is the timeline? What is the window to get it up at 100% full capacity? Uh, and that is another conversation we need to start having. Uh, but after all of this, after we have maybe looked at this for the next six months, one year, we now need to come back to the conversation on... Uh, how come we were able to get this up and running for 25 years? What was done differently this time? All of this conversation will begin to have um, um, after we are sure that we have gotten this up to 100% uh, uh, production capacity. So if you ask me, this is a good news. It's a welcome development. Uh, those of us that are from River State, for Sakot and Environs, uh, this is very, very important for us because if you look at the schedule of cost of PMS, uh, 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 it, it was, you know, exp or it's expensive even down south where we have the crude oil, which is so unfortunate for us. Um, I'm from a local, com a local government, a river state called Bonny Local Government. And uh, the only way of mode of transportation to Portacot mainland is by boat. So we have to ferry by boat from Portacot to, to our local government. 
Uh, that cost used to be 3,000 Naira, 2,000 Naira, 1,500 so many years back. But within the years and most recently, that cost has come, you know, above 10,000, you know, Naira uh, per passenger for a one-hour ride from Potako to Bonny. So that cost alone is driven by, you know, the increased cost of PMS over time. This year, we have had like more than three, four times the review of that cost as the cost of uh, fuel goes up in the market. So uh, we hope that with this refining in Port Harcourt, uh, we, are, we are closer, you know, to getting uh, you know, PMS. And uh, those of us in Port Harcourt, we see the, 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 the reduction of, you know, petrol pump price uh, so that it, it should stop affecting the economy activities. Because in my local government, for example, now, because of the cost of that transportation from Port Harcourt, to Bonnie, it affects you know everything in the market uh, in the local government because all the traders have to transport their goods from Potakot mainland down to Bonnie. So you can see the economic you know um, effects of, of the cost of of PMS, which is uh, a petrol even at pump price. So there's a lot of economy economic uh, uh, effects uh, from us not refining you know our own petrol over the years, and we hope that now. Uh, we can arrive at that, uh, uh, that okay. look, this will not bring positive change to the economy. But in all, I would just say it is good news. Welcome development. Congratulations to the president, President Tinobu, and of course, the leadership of uh, NAPCL. Oh, okay. Well, I do hope that your, your, your dream of uh, fuel coming down, the price of fuel coming down so that transportation will be good enough is, is uh, uh, realized. Uh, let me talk to Mr. Agule. Yeah, we have, we have this refinery that is up, and it's being said that it's the older refinery and the smaller one, and the capacity is less than 100,000 liters. Um, in fact, 50,000 is what is, is being said it will, it will be producing, even though NNPCL has told us it's 60,000 liters uh, they are going to be producing every, every day. Now, the bigger one, which should have about 150,000, is not up and running. And uh, there are some people who are suspecting that this, the one trillion naira subsidy that, other pe that people were still crying about that NMPCL has used may even be the one they're using to import uh, fuel. Maybe they are not mm -hmm. even producing from, from mm -hmm. Port Harcourt. Be that as it may. But what's the picture that this... Uh, pains for you. What is your projection as an energy expert that this refinery is up and running? What impact can it have on the Nigerian economy and especially in the oil sector? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nyango. So the facts are like you have rightly stated. Port Harcourt has got two refineries, even though they are on the same site. The old refinery was built in 1965. It has 60,000 Paris capacity template. The new, the newer refinery, if I will say that, is not that new again. So the newer refinery was built in 1985, and it has 150,000 barrels capacity template. Now, these two refineries have hardly met full production since they were commissioned. So to your question that, what does this news that the NMPCL has now offered that the old and whether they are not using savings from um, fuel subsidy to import petroleum products, and I'm not in a position to confirm anything whether the, the refinery in production or whether it's not in production. Uh, what what uh, we have to happen is that instead of the NMPCL issuing us a press conference, there are certain things that are evident if a refinery is in operation. Let them invite journalists to go to site. It's just like in the case of the refinery. They always invited journalists to take them to site so that journalists can see the production activities at the refinery. And when they started to load petroleum products, we also saw it that they invited journalists who saw the flag off of the loading of petroleum products as we saw those tankers approaching the loading base all at the same time. And they started to load products. 
And we have heard people like Ipman who say they are not buying from Dangote refinery. They are loading products. So, so this same thing has to happen for the Pohako refinery. It's not as if we are not excited. We are happy that at least one of our refineries, even if it is the smallest of them, is back in production. But we have been taking for a ride for so long that we are justified to be doubtful of what this same NMPC is telling us. So the, so, so the NMPC need to, to open their, 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 their refinery to public scrutiny uh, so that we can see what is happening there. And uh, let me also say that the NMPC issued a follow-up statement after their initial statement that Potaco refinery has now started production. Let me, let me just uh, quote some aspects of that statement, which they have uh, offered, they have issued on, uh, on X. So the first thing they said was that, that the Potaco uh, refinery is now at 70%, it's now operating at 70% of its installed capacity. Mm. And they have plans to ramp it up to 90%. They didn't put a timeline on when that 90% will happen. And then Nigeria should listen very carefully to what the NMPCL is saying. NMPCL said the daily output from this older Port Hako refinery are straight wrong gasoline, naphtha, premium motor spirits, PMS of one producing petrol. They are producing a precursor to petrol, and then they are using other products to blend it before it becomes petrol. And then they go ahead to say, oh, every refinery does blending and all of that, which is, to me, um, not necessary. Of course, they went ahead to say that they are producing 900,000 liters of uh, kerosene and uh, 1.5 million liters of uh, AGO, which is diesel, and then uh, 2.1 million uh, liters of uh, LPO, low pour fuel oil, and then liquefied petroleum gas. That is what we call cooking gas. That they are produced. They did put the volumes for for LPG, and then uh, they they went ahead to now say something that I thought is very unprofessional. And if they listen to us, please let them just stop these mind games with Nigerians. They say, oh, that uh, uh, people's. Um, uh, are making malicious attacks on clear progress to undermine the significant strides made by you know people should not be bringing their basic uh, uh, personal thinking into official matters when a, a citizen is questioning and, and asking questions and seeking clarification and making uh, objective uh, analysis of information that is in the public domain is not a malicious attack. Whoever is in the NMPC, please go home and go and be talking this thing. We own this country. It is our duty to know what is happening in Nigeria. And when we ask those questions, please, it is not malicious attack. Bottom line, Nyamgo, until I start to... Um, use petrol from a potato refinery i will i will take this story with a pinch of salt okay before we go into other specifics in the small time that we have let me go back to uh, uh, jumbo um how how do you how does it happen when when this petrol is being produced in potato you said that the lives of uh, uh, the river state citizens will be will be a little bit better how much better apart from the fact that maybe there will be uh, a reduction which is, uh, which is um, universal for everybody, a reduction in the price of petrol, because as of today, we are hearing that petrol is about 900 naira per litre uh, because of the, uh, the, the coming on stream of the Potakot refinery. I don't know how true that is and which, which areas. But what is the direct impact on the citizens of Rivers State? Because because it is being produced in rivers. What is the direct impact? Because everything about reducing the cost is for the entire Nigeria. What happens to the river state people? I don't know if it's my brother, um, online, if you want to say that. 
can hear an echo. Yeah, I don't know. I Okay. Can you confirm you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I could hear an echo as well. Maybe um, there were too many mics open. Go on. So, so just to respond, uh, I read to your question, and which is a fantastic question you have asked. Um, uh, and, and, and just like my brother said earlier, look, all of us, uh, many of us, don't blame us if we take this whole news again, a pinch of salt, even though we're happy it is coming. It's good news, I mean, uh, uh, to hear finally. Uh, but there are so many trust issues with the NNPC uh, and how it has handled, you know, the different failed promises to, you know, kickstart production with this refinery uh, in Port Harcourt. Now, to, 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 to respond to you, look, first of all, um, which they need to come clean again is the NNPC need to come and tell us cost of refining. From the cost of refining, um, we can directly say, okay, if they set the price at X amount, uh, this is what the impact will really be. But for us uh, in South-South, not just River States, the, 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 the impact there for us is that we have, you know, distribution to us or access to, to, to PMS will be a lot much easier, uh, and which we expect to drive down, uh, which also we expect to drive down that cost when they eventually pegged it. Uh, because if the refin uh, refinery is in Port Harcourt, and we around South-South cannot buy it any cheaper, than now that they, they are refining in Lagos, and then they are importing and landing in Lagos, you know, uh, and we are buying it expensive in down South, now the reverse should be the case. We want to see that happen. But most importantly, uh, the NNPC only to come out, you know, to tell us the cost of refining what is the cost of refining, you know, and, and that should not affect how much it is being sold at the end of the day. I, I, you see, and I agree with, with, with what, you know, my good brother said, you know, earlier. Now, look, they need to open their doors to the media, you know, so that we come and, you know, truly assess. And, and there's a lot of lessons they can learn from what Dangote already did with how, you know, he handled the media and all of the news that came out from the Dangote refinery. You know, let us go and really have more insight into what they have done. You know, let's clearly see. Let the media have, have visibility and exposure, you know, into what they are doing over there. And so that we can, you know, verify clearly that it is what they have said it is. But truly, it, 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 you can't take it away that if this refinery begins to work, you know, uh, optimally and efficiently, it is indeed going to affect, you know, uh, positively, the lives of people, first of all, from down south. Uh, and like I gave you all the analysis now, my local government is just one. Uh, 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 it's just one. And in my local government, we have a float in NFC jetty that has never worked for more than 20 years. You know, once we arrive, Bonnie, there's a floating NFC jetty there that has never worked. It's the same with many areas and riverine communities across the, the, you know, the south, uh, the south south, you know. And the, the suffering, you know, of trying to get patrol most of the time is it, it, something that we, 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 you know, we have suffered to the point where we don't even know what to say again. You know, so this refinery changes everything for us, sincerely. And imagine that NFPC begins to empower all of its floating JT, uh, floating uh, 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 filling stations, you know, across the south-south, uh, which I know they have a couple of them. I can't remember the number right now. But I know uh, I've seen that publication before. A couple of these floating, you know, filling stations, you know, across the Liberian communities. Are you telling me this will not change everything? It will change. You know, if you come, I even see the kind of fuel that cars consume, you know, in the south south, especially the Liberian areas. You'll be you'll be sorry. You know, honestly, it's a sorry state. You know, so. With the cost of PMS down in Lagos and the price that it is in Lagos today, if you go down south, it's, it's nearly, you know, double that amount. You know, and I tell my Lagosians, we are even getting it even more cheaper. You know, go out and see what they are buying in Port Harcourt and Ribadan areas. So all of this is what we did must consider. And, and, and I hope the NAPC will come clean to Nigerians on this, you know, uh, uh, reactivation of this refinery, what it is doing, the processes, I hope the NAPC is going to open up 
because uh, uh, they need to be able to solve the trust issues they have with Nigerians. This will yeah. be at least the fifth time or fourth time we have had promises, you know, from the GCU of NAPC, you know, on uh, on the starting of the refinery. So don't blame Nigerians if they don't even trust uh, entirely that it is what it is the way they are painting it. So the economic advantage uh, to the South, uh, um, the South South specifically, is enormous. Uh, and we hope that NFPC will be honest, NFPC will be transparent, NFPC will be op open. And then, most importantly, we want to know what is the cost for refining, you know, uh, uh, this crude oil uh, in the refinery? What is the cost? We want to know the cost, you know, the cost of it, which is not visible at All this right. time. I think it's where the problem is. And uh, we hope that they will come out clean to tell us what it is. What is that cost? Let us know. And okay. then the timeline... We are, if, the, if we are at 60% production now with the old refinery and we hope to ramp up, you know, to 90%, what is the timeline? Thank you, Wisdom. What is the timeline? I'm tempted to say that um, that transparency you're looking for will never happen. That is NNPCL. At least under <laughs> this um, present uh, leadership of NNPCL, you will not hear that because uh, they like being like a secret society, like a cult and all that. But a final word from Nick Agule. What are you expecting beyond just reopening the refinery? What are you expecting them to do as briefly as possible as we wrap up? And uh, Nick. Uh, thank you very much, Nyango. Uh, what I'm expecting from the NPCL is transparency. And now that they are saying they are loading petroleum products, how much are they selling it for? We need to know that. And also, they say that uh, the new Potakor refinery will also soon come on stream. I can't remember Potakor refinery. The 150,000 barrels refinery was awarded. When was it awarded? Who is the contractor? When did work start? How did we just now hear, as, as, as an aside, that that big refinery is coming on stream? So NMPCA needs to be more transparent. Let them not sit in their office and be calling us malicious uh, people. The refinery belongs to us. As Nigerians, we own it. They are just our managers. The manager cannot be calling an owner um, a malicious attack and when he's asking questions about an asset that belongs to him. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming and sharing your thoughts with us. We have this new refinery. We hope that it will affect the prices uh, no matter how small. And we hope for a better Nigeria. Inflation will come down and so many other things that are attached to uh, petrol prices uh, will now stabilize a little bit. We'd like to thank you, Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst, and uh, Nick Agule, also a public affairs analyst and an energy expert. It was so much a pleasure having you gentlemen on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we'll take a break, and when we return, we'll go to something else. We've been talking with uh, Nick Agule and uh, Wisdom Chap Jumbo. The next is that we're going to be looking at uh, the monetary policies uh, raising of uh, interest.